All right. So we got the day, the day of reckoning. They got to go to Q. Now, we already know about Jeffrey questioning Will, but they got to get out of here. It's the big day. We got to pitch this idea. Now, at this moment, we really don't know what Black Sess is. We just know Quentin is having a meeting for all the young, black, and gifted entrepreneurs. They all show up. This young lady is over here talking about her nonprofit, Wastewater. I said, that's a hell of an achievement. You know, I should deal with the Aquafina. I used to deal with the EPA. So to me, anything pertaining to water and saving the environment, I am a key. Well, I won't say I'm a key figure to that because, you know, I'd be blowing dodo back in the day before, you know, saying I became what I am today. But then we had a young man talking about making an app to do something else. And then we got Black Sess. Now, Black Sess is really just giving black people access to, I guess, um, different people within the community, a uh, certain reach out, but they're also an apparel company. So they have the, the original design. It is a prototype. Now, no one else in the class was questioned about what their reach, uh, ROI is, return on investment. Hey, if we invest $1,000, what are we going to get back from it? Hey, by the end of the year, we're looking at getting you certain amount of percent you'll make this back in 10 years we'll be able to recoup this much amount of money you'll get this much back you might even get a little bit of dividends that we end up going public you know what I'm saying that ipo you'll be in there you could probably cash out on the first day because it might shoot up it might drop more than likely to shoot up if we got the right people backing us they're talking about what's your cpa and will doesn't know any of these business terms CPA, he's talking about uh, your accountant. No, 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 no. Now, Carlton has the expertise in this. Will is more of the marketing guy. He's more of the people person. He's more of a get out, tell you something, and sell you something. He's the marketing man. Now, the only issue is they only have a prototype of the shirt. Now, the, the shirt is dope. Uh, Peacock, y'all should sell that shirt. Uh, Bel Air, y'all should sell that shirt. I'm sure people will buy. I would buy one. I buy a hoodie and a t-shirt. Hey, would you guys? Hey, put a put a one in the chat if you would buy one of those shirts. I buy one if they had it. They had like the real ones. You can go on the website and buy. I buy one. But now Carlton will they get into it because. Well, they ain't got no product, and they go into Jazz. Now, Jazz got a partner that's hooking them up. This is one of those situations where I know a dude that know a dude. Carlton knows Will, who knows Jazz, who knows the guy with the hookup. I got the hookup, Ollie, if you hear me. Now, this guy, he don't communicate. This is the worst kind of business you do. Like, if I hit you up because I'm paying for a service, I need to know, hey, what's the ETA? How long you think you're roughly going to take? How long before it ships out? I need these updates because I got shit I'm doing on my end. But matter of fact, I got to go check my, my site because I don't, man, they ain't gave my URL back. That's why I ain't been posting like nothing on there. But I need to get my my commercial J URL back, man. I applied for it. They've been BSing me. Um, but he's like, man, my dog, he's good for it. But Man, he just ain't gonna talk to you, man. You just gonna have to hear from him when you hear from him. And Will's like, man, what? And Carlton's like, man, what? We we need this stuff. We need this now. Jazz is getting the t-shirts from Tony. Yeah, I'm saying, but we know a guy that knows a guy, but this nigga Tony ain't loyal. You know what I mean? He's like, man, Tony, good for it, man. Carlton's like, man, that ain't good business, man. We need to figure it out. But anyway, they get to knocking heads the whole episode. They ain't on the same page. So they have a little argument, and the girls decide to pop up, and they like, look, let's squash this and take them out to the beach. Now, this is episode four, so we kind of zooming through four because it was just Carlton and Will getting into it, Carlton and Will making up. They go out to the beach, but they go their separate ways. Now, at first, I thought they all rolled together because they packed up the truck, and it was full. But they were over in the Hellcat. Hellcat! But they go to the beach, they go their separate ways. Carlton starts messing with a mirror. Will's over here. He sees Carlton and them chasing each other, playing football. So he's talking about, let's go, let's go get out in the water. Let's go boogie board. Let's go have some fun in the sun. 
So everyone's trying to, you know, saying one up each other, but no one really cares. It's like, man, we ain't in no competition. We both family. Then it goes to volleyball. Now, if you know me, if you know me, I'm a volleyball champion. Facts. I know y'all be looking at me and thinking I'm old and washed up, but back in my heyday, I was the man in these streets. I am a volleyball champion on the base also uh, during ALS. I think I got a, a trophy. One, I think I got the volleyball trophy also. We won a football trophy too. I was doing my thing out there, man. You know how I do it. But they out there playing volleyball. Now, this is beach volleyball. Now, the rules are a little bit different. You could dive because you dive it into the sand. So you got you to gotta go for what you know. Go for gold, right? Well, these two, they ain't on the same page. So they clashing. They clashing, clashing, and clashing. They running into each other. I got it. No, I got it. I got it. No, I got it. I got it. I got it. No, I got it. But nobody's got it. Nobody got it. So now we we in a predicament. We down, and it's like freaking game point. Game point. Game point. Like, God damn, we going to 15, and we ain't scored yet. We'll talk about, I got it. I got it. Carlton talking about, I got it. I got it. Well, neither one of them got it. And Well, they run into each other, and they clash. And then they get to arguing with each other, yelling, man, I told you I had it, man. Why you do this, Carlton? He said, what are you doing, Will? You need to open up your eyes, man. You can't see. So they get to arguing, and they go their separate ways. So, man, they still arguing, arguing about nonsense. But this is what high schoolers do. So when I got kicked out of school in the sixth grade, I always tell you guys that story. It all happened over a volleyball match, too. That's crazy. How ironic. So when I... um. I, uh, you know, when I, when I cut a guy, just put it like that. When I, when, when I ended up cutting a guy with a piece of metal, it was over volleyball. He was on the other side of the net, was talking trash. And, you know, one thing led to another slicey, slicey. I got expelled from school. They luckily they dropped the charges, but you know, it is what it is. But volleyball can get very intense. Volleyball is an intense sport. You may not think it, but oh, it is. It's a very competitive sport. But the old me's dead and gone, y'all. Y'all ain't got to worry about that no more. So from there, Will's trying to prove that, hey, man, I might not be as business savvy as as Carl. I'm about to say jazz as Carlton, but I, I bring something to the table as far as it goes for this business. So she's actually helping them study. And, you know, man, high schoolers ain't about to be doing too much studying. They doing just enough studying. Just enough studying to get by. Not enough studying, but just enough studying. Well, they end up taking off clothes, getting bucket naked out on the beach. You know how it is. You wake up, you got sand in your, yeah, you know what I mean. So when we go to episode five, we get to meet Miss Tina. Now, we know about Zaire. They talked to Zaire, and Zaire is the one that told them about Miss Tina and potentially setting up over here on the pickleball tournament. So when they get over here, Miss Tina, they call her ma'am. And I don't know why women don't like being, well, I don't like being called sir. Like, you ain't got to call me sir. You can just, you can be respectful and call me Julius. You know what I mean? You can call me Julius or Mo. This is, I'll go by either one. It don't matter to me. I don't care who you are. Your kids ain't got to call me Mr. Mo or nothing like that. One of my co-workers sons came in uh, Thursday he was like, yeah, this is Mr. Moore. I'm like, man, you can just call me Julius. Man, yeah, call me no Mr. Moore. I don't care. But they talking to Miss Tina, and I'm looking like Miss Tina a little bit too old for them, and I'm over there on the sideline like, hey, Miss Tina, you know your boy got a bad hip, but I can pick a ball. Yeah, I can pick a ball all day. I need you to pick a ball. I mean, pick a ball. I'm not, did I say pick a ball? I said pick a ball. So she looking at them talking about this ain't going to be no easy task, gentlemen. Carlton pushes Will up there. And you know Will. <laughs> Will ain't never turned down an opportunity to make an opportunity. He ain't Uncle Marvin. Uncle Marvin <laughs> never misses an opportunity to miss an opportunity. Yeah, and Will, he steps to the play. He get out there, do a little bit of stretching. And they get out there. Now I'm thinking Miss Tina know what she's doing. She got the Lakot song. I said, okay. She got the sweater tied up. I said, okay. She got the hair down. Well, it ain't down. It's up in the ponytail. I said, okay. Miss Tina's fierce. She got them legs out. I said, okay. She got the perfect stance. I said, okay. And they go at it. But then Will ends up winning. 
so they get the job. Now, they both decide that, man. She's a little mean, but they said, boy, we in love with her. I remember being 19. I, 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 well, they ain't 19. I remember being 19. Y'all know my, I had my 31-year-old when I was up in Montana. I had, she was the baddest she could be in Montana. You know what I mean? The baddest she was going to get in Montana. She was nice. She was really nice. Probably like a, she was real, she was not nice. She was real nice. I ain't going to lie to you. She was real nice. But I was 19 and she, I was like, damn, there's something about this woman. Mm, mm, mm. But a nigga didn't get played. Now, Carlton and Will, they like, damn, I'm in love. And from here is where it goes downhill. Because the reason we took this job is because we want to try to get next to Pony Rich. Now, Will, he's over here watching. We're Pony Rich. He's also the ball boy. So he's going back and forth and collecting the balls. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Carlton is up here. He's serving people the drinks. But Carlton starts to have one of his episodes. So Will got to come over here and save him. Will's like, damn, are you all right? He's like, Will, just leave. Just leave me alone, man. I need to go. I need. I, just give me some time, man. So he leaves, and now Will's over here. Now, the only thing is he got to clean up everything that's happening because Carlton is gone. He was the ball boy. And then Jackie pulls up, talking about beep, beep. He's like, oh, what's up, Jackie? He said, how you get over here? I am at work, Will. I'm dropping people off. He's like, hey, hey, hey. Well, um, they got me cleaning up. Can you help me? She said, oh, now you want me to be a helpful bitch. But when Lisa was calling me a helpful bitch, you ain't step up for me. But let's be real. You can't, in this situation, if you're with your girl and a girl you were fucking with, you got to take your girl's side. Like, you can step in and stop it, but you got to take your girl's side. You can't step up and say, hey, Lisa, watch how you're talking to Jackie. What does she expect Will to do? That's his girlfriend. Now, Jackie's like, you want me to be a helpful bitch? I got to go back to work. He's like, wait, 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 wait. Just help me out. Just help me out with Black Says. That's really all I'm here for is Black Says. I apologize for that, man. I got you. I'm in your corner. She said when you was up at Zenith trying to work out and find your way, who was there? Me. But if I was Will, I would have said, yeah, you were there for me, but you was also trying to set me up in the beginning. Let's not forget that uh, Doc was trying to screw me over until fucking Uncle Phil came. We ain't forget that, Jackie. But damn, you're looking good, Jackie, is what Will is thinking. But damn, I had to stick up for Lisa. So I, I'm sorry. I just don't know, man. I'm confused. But Jackie, she drives off and she ain't giving Will no attention because she don't want to be a helpful bitch no more. This her words, not mine, y'all. I'm not calling her a B. She called herself a B. I'm just enunciating a bitch. <laughs> Well, oh, do I have it? Oh, yeah, yeah. So before we even get there, Jackie pulls back up, and it was this creep guy. He's like, oh, yeah. Yo, yeah. How about some change, girl? How about some change? What you going to do? You going to do something strange for that change? <laughs> I'm like, man, this is a high schooler, sir. This is a high schooler. I'm just adding this. You want to do something for some change? Will looks over and he sees this. And Will's like, hey, yo, yo, what the hell you got going on? She said, back off, bucko. Hold your horses, mister. At ease, soldier. So Will steps up. Jackie, like, she ain't playing that shit either. I said, ooh, Jackie feisty. Will stepping up. Will being a real gentleman. Now, in this instance, you know me. I don't get in domestic disputes or anything. So me, I'm I'm looking over there at the dude doing what he do. I'm just, hey security, security, get over here and handle this. Cause I don't get in domestic disputes. That's one thing I don't do. I'm ready. Y'all got going. Hey, 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 sir, keep your hands off of her. Hey, sir, stop that. Security, you need to come break this up. Where's security at? But I'm not getting involved in any of this. I whoa, whoa, whoa. But Will steps up. And of course. Members of the club, since they spend so much money and they ain't, they got that privilege. Because when people come over and see this, all they see is an angry black guy touching one of the members. Hey, Will, what are you doing? You can't do that. Will, get off him. Will, you need to go cool off. You need to get out of here, mister. Will's like, he was attacking Jackie. He was a perv. He was a creep. So Will did the right thing, but they told Will to go cool off. 
I would have said, I don't need to cool off. I'm going to stop in the situation because as Eric said, it's heating up out here and this nigga was getting a little too close. This nigga was getting his Kells and Diddy on out here in the public. Ah. So Will stopped it, but they told Will, go cool off. Cool off? Nigga, what am I cooling off for? I just stopped the potential SA. But after Will did that, it proved to Jackie that, no, I really am looking out for you. I don't have nothing against you. It was just Lisa was out of line that night. So Jackie pulls up with Pony Rich. And when she tells Will after Will talks to Zaire and finds out that Zaire is actually the one that put that bug in Will's ear to potentially go and meet up with his father because his father passed. And he said, you, you're you never too late until it's too late. Basically meaning your father's here. Make the best of that. At least talk to him. Have a relationship with him because once he's gone, there's no going back. There's no trying to make up for the time that you lost already, but the time that you're losing now by not even reaching out. So Will ends up talking to Zaire and he also talks to Pony Rich and he connects with him. He tells him exactly, Hey, we're donating 50 of the proceeds to black owned businesses. He's like black says, I like that name and that's a dope concept. So he hops on live. He supports them and man, them shirts, they sell like hotcakes. They sell like hot cakes. I'm talking about, hey, move that shit out of the way. Matter of fact, we talking about black sets. Y'all go get y'all some black sets right here. Vultures by Kanye. Vultures by Kanye. He's a black man. He's a black man. Go support a black man. Go support a black man. It's only $20 too. Everything was $20. 20, 20, 20, 20. Black sets. That's what I'm wearing today. That's my black sets. I support a yay, even though he's a, well, he was a billionaire, but I still support yay. You know, man, I could have been out in these streets robbing folks, but I say I'm gonna support another black man. <laughs> All right. So after this, Will does text his mom and tells her he needs her out here in LA. They show up, and they in the car. Oh, when you walk by every night, talking sweet and looking fly. I get kind of hectic inside. And baby, I'm so into you. Tell me what you want to do. <laughs> but anyway, they pull up. And outside the house, Uncle Phil got everyone out there. They protested this shit. They all outside wilding out. Well, they pull up. But that's neither here or there because it's Will's story. Will got to dip and dive through that. Now, Black Sess is up and on the road. They got Viv. They got Vibe. They coming down in the new tank tops because initially they started off with just T-shirts and hoodies. But now they got tank tops. Well, they had tank tops when Jackie was wearing it. Tank tops, the baseball uh, jerseys. They got the bucket hats. They got everything. They Instagram is going up, 500 people in the live. So you know it, it's it's crunk. They got their moms out there modeling. I thought this was dope, man. The two cousins with their moms, their sisters. I, I thought this was a dope moment too. Me personally, I like moments like this. This was a good moment too. What Bel Air has been doing, they've been giving us feel good moments throughout each episode. Like the feel and viv working it out. That was a feel good moment. This right here. Seeing the family together, succeeding together, that's a feel-good moment. Seeing uh, Will, his dad, and his mom all sitting down, that's a feel-good moment. So I like, I like all of that. I like how they're putting that into the show. So now they sold out. And we get to the nitty gritty, the important, the sit down between Lou, William, and Vibe. We are gathered here today to discuss our family dynamic 
Now I have a picture. The last time all three of us were in a room together, I was four years old, over 13 years ago. Now I have some questions and I don't want any issues. We were in a neutral location. Spencer allowed us to use his meeting room for this. Mom, you said that you will not wild out and be disrespectful as long as he doesn't raise his voice. Lou, you agreed to show up in this neutral point so we can all get our words across like civilized adults. Now, Lou is very, very proud of Will. Vi hasn't been telling Will the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. First, she talks about him being in L.A. and not reaching out to his son. Well, his son has a messed up perspective of his father because of the words that were fed to him over the duration of 13 years. Will never knew the truth. The only people that knew the truth was Lou and Vi. But when Lou showed up and tried to talk to Will, all of that hate that was in his heart because he didn't know the truth, all that hate was built up lies that were told to him over a span of 13 years. Your father ain't shit. Your father was in the streets. Your father was a thug. Your father was a minister of society. Your father was a mongrel. Your father was a deadbeat. Your father was a career criminal. Your father was a flunky. Your father was a drunk out. Your father was a bitch ass nigga. Your father didn't have no street cred. Your father had a little bitty shrimp paws. Your father wasn't all the way there. Your father didn't help out with the bills. Your father wasn't a real man. Your father wanted to go 50 50. Your father didn't put food on the table. Your father couldn't keep a job. Your father don't want to be your daddy. You want to rip and run the streets. Your father ain't got a pot to piss in. Your father, your father ain't worth the damn. Your father can't count to 10. Your father wasn't even that good of a hooper. Your father can't really fade up hair like that. Your father couldn't keep a job. Did I mention that already? Your father was a criminal. Your father was a thief. Your father wasn't shit. So this whole time, Vi has been feeding these lies to Will. So the only thing Will knew was that Lou just ran out of their lives. All called to, I mean, not called to, Will knew was Lou left and didn't want nothing to do with the family. But it turns out Lou tells us the truth. Lou tells us that the reason he went to jail wasn't because he was a thug. It wasn't because he was just out in the street robbing people. It was because Vi yelled at him when they were sitting in the house with no heat. She yelled at him. Knowing he doesn't have any education. He doesn't have any work experience. He's doing what he can as a teenage boy that's a dropout. It's already a lot of pressure being a kid, but being a kid with a kid is even more. In Philly, no education. Now, Bob starts yelling at him and tells him, I'm not standing in this fucking cold-ass house another day. And he says, at that moment, I heard it in my head. It was a noise. It was a sound. Somebody said, nigga, get up and do what you got to do. And then Bob said, go talk to that man and get what you're owed. Well, that wasn't who Lou was. Lou's character wasn't aggressive. Lou wasn't a person that was out in the streets, ripping and running the streets. No, 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 no. Lou was a reserved kid that just wanted to play basketball. But now he's getting yelled at by his baby mama. Now she's telling him, oh, you better. This is no different than a girl going up to a guy and starting some shit in public and saying, my man, a whoop on you. She's yelling at him, telling him, you need to go do this. You need to go do that. So when he goes down there, he starts to ask for the money. Well, he said it all happened so fast. The guy wasn't trying to pay him. Obviously, he wasn't trying to pay him because he hadn't paid him to this moment. So one thing led to another. Lou had to defend himself. Lou ended up robbing the guy. And guess what? Lou went to jail 
for robbing the guy that owed him money to put heat in the house to protect Vi and Will, his son. But the story was never relayed back to Will. The story was your daddy went to jail for robbing somebody. Vi left that man in prison by himself and told her son that he was a piece of shit and he was just out robbing people when that wasn't the story. The real story is he went out and was doing what she asked and one thing led to another and he ended up getting locked up. And for those years that he was gone, Will only knew that his dad was a robber, not that his dad went out there to collect money that was owed to him to put the heater on, to put the money on the heater to protect his mother and him. That right there is fucked up, Vi. There's no, there's nothing you can say that can change that whole story. Because Will would have had a totally different perspective about his father. He wouldn't have been toting guns. He would have still been able to see his dad when he got out. But no, the whole time, everyone's thinking Lou is a piece of shit. Remember Uncle Phil? Uncle Phil was like, oh, I don't know if I want Lou here. Lou's a robber. So Uncle Phil believed that Lou was just some two-bit criminal off the street. Jeffrey thought that Lou was some criminal off the street. No, Lou was trying to provide for his family. So this whole time, the whole Banks family is living off of a lie from what Vi said. Vi is the reason why everyone had the wrong idea about Lou. That's fucked up. That's There's nothing you can say that's going to change anything that's happened. Because Vivian, Phil, Jeffrey, Carlton, Hillary, Will, they all thought that Lou was just some fucking convict that was just, you know what, I'm robbing niggas today. No. Lou went down there to get the money that he was owed, and one thing led to another because he was pushed to the limit. And then when he was at his lowest moment, who was there for Lou? When Viv and Will was at their lowest moment, who was there for them? Lou was. Lou went to go try to get the money that he was owed because he wanted to make sure the family was good. But as soon as Lou gets locked up, where's Vi at? Vi ain't got nothing to do with this nigga when he tried to fix everything that was going on. And now the whole family is looking at Lou like he's a piece of shit. His own son thought that Lou was a piece of shit. His own son stopped playing basketball because of the hate that he had built up for his father because his mother fucking lied to him his whole life about who his dad was. There's nothing you can do that can change by lying about what happened to Lou. Vi is the worst type of baby mama you can have. She didn't even tell her. She should have said, Will, he went out there. The robbery happened. Because he was trying to get the money that was owed to him. He went to jail for that because he was trying to provide for us. Nope. Nope. Even after all of this happened, when they got to the house, what did Vi say? Oh, no, I don't want to sit down with him no more. You don't want to sit down with him no more because this man got arrested trying to provide for y'all. And you left his ass in jail. You lied to your family about what he went out there and did. And you made it seem like he just out here with a gun running around robbing people. No, nah, man, Lou had dreams. Lou had dreams of playing basketball. Even Uncle Phil knew that maybe something ain't right with this story because he told Will, he told Will, your father, it was either play basketball or you selling dope. How are you trying to get out the hood? So even he knew Lou had a dream. Lou was the MVP. He had something going for him. He ended up dropping out of school. Yeah, he made that mistake. We all make mistakes in life, but she lied to her son the whole time his dad was really out there trying to provide for them. That's messed up. That's completely wrong and out of pocket. Vi, you wrong. Wrong. You wrong. There ain't nothing. I, I to Be quiet. I don't want to hear another word from you. Not for this episode. Bye. Go back to Philly. Go back to Philly and go back to that house with no heat. We don't want you out here in L.A. Nope. 
We don't want to hear you say nigga no more. Get out of here, Bob. We don't want you here. To the left, to the left. Everything you want's in the box. To the left. Get on that plane. Go back to Philly. You lied on Lou when we don't like you. Go home. Get out of here, Bob. We're done with Bob. We're not talking about Bob. Don't bring Bob up on. I'm done with Bob. I don't want to hear nothing about her. She is the villain of the Bel Air story. Will grew up without a father because Vi lied on Lou. Lou wasn't in jail all these years. Lou only went to jail for a couple of years. Then Lou got out of jail, and she never told Will the true story. Now Will's pistol packing, getting into it with niggas. If he would have had a father figure in his life, like he got Uncle Phil in his life, he would have been going down the right path. But no. But no. A lion mother is the worst type of mother. Vi, you wrong. You're the biggest villain of this. Because if you would have told the truth, Will would have never been living with his auntie and uncle in Bel Air. He would have never whistled for that cab. And when it came near, the license place wouldn't say fresh. They wouldn't have license. And I mean, uh, dice in the mirror. Anything I can say that this cab is rare, your homes forget it. Your home to Bel Air. I pulled up to he wouldn't have pulled up to the house about 7 30 or 8 he would have never had to do all of that but he had to because you lied to that boy you lied to that boy i'm done with you bye and from there at least we get a happy ending <laughs> we going to the court and we hear lou tell will i'm proud of you man i'm proud of you so at least they're on good terms so i can see with Charlie's vinyl, we got Charlie's vinyl. Now we got Will and Carlton. They can go post up over at uh at Lou's barbershop. So this would be good too for the uh the black businesses within the uh the community. So that's definitely gonna be a good thing. I want to see how this plays out with Will and him, but I think that relationship's gonna be open. So we should see him popping up like at the house more. The family gonna show him more respect because they're gonna get the real story now, and the dynamics gonna change. See, once the truth came out, life look, it's the sun is shining now. Life is just better. But that's Will's story over these three episodes. I mean, we didn't go too much in depth. We'll probably go we'll do another live on Monday before I head on out of here. <clears throat> but, man, he's doing a hell of a job being Lou, though. He's doing a hell of a job being Lou. I like I like him as a character. I could. It would be dope to see, like, him and, uh, and Will. Like, if they had, like, a couple of episodes, just them two. Like doing some shit, going out, adventuring out, and doing some things. Because it is the summer. That'd be cool to watch. That'd be cool to watch. But yeah, there we go. We got three hours in. Uh, I got to get up. I got to make me some runs. To <clears throat> I got to make me some runs tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? We got to get up and out. Uh, support the channel what you guys think overall what, what, what are you rating the season i got the season in like a seven and a half eight i guess seven and a half eight i want to see how these last episodes are playing out because this has a potential to be like a nine i like i like because it's a drama of course you know i'm comparing it amongst others but this is just pure drama it isn't you know there ain't no murdering or none of that so i, I like the how they're doing this how they flip the OG Fresh Prince into a straight drama. All right, solid eight. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, like a seven and a half, eight, eight and a half. So we'll just take the median. So about an eight. All right, yeah, eight is pretty good. The acting is great. Everyone's doing a good job, man. I like to see Marlon in serious roles. Jabari's doing a hell of a job. It's a believable... It's, of course, we know it's a TV show, so they're trying to jam pack all the drama that they can. But I mean, that's a that's a plus. I mean, that's that's necessary. They got to do that. But I definitely love how they're putting this together. The drama, the storyline is good. The storyline ain't shaky. It does have you wondering, like the whole Frederick situation. We were thinking maybe he was talking to uh, Raymond, but it turned out it was his mom. And okay, boom, boom, boom. I wonder if the mom is still going to be here. So I definitely like all of that. We still don't know about the Lamarcus story and if they're going to get out of if he's going to get out of that or she's going to get with Jazz. We didn't talk about Phil 
and what he got going on, I'll have to do like I'll probably do a breakdown video of that. But Jazz told him he's gonna keep on hustling, he's not selling Calvin's. Yolanda's probably gonna partner up with Will, and this is a, that might actually work for the community. With with Black Sess, Will being so close to Jazz, Jazz being close to Yolanda, Yolanda's leading the protest against Omar. Feels working with Omar. Omar's supposed to be helping the community out. Will can do Black Sess, and then they they'll start putting like maybe advertisements into Omar's, you know, what I'm saying his shopping facility, and then it it'll, it'll help everybody else. So the money will trickle down because Omar is trying to buy up all the property. So they they doing a good job, man. I, I mess with it, man. It's a very good show. Very good show. But hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'm low key kind of losing my voice, but yeah, I rock with it, man. Hell of a show. We got two more weeks. I think if we're going off of what I read on Wednesday, it'll be two and then two episodes the next week. But hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to 50,000 subscribers. Support the channel. Cash app is pinned in the chat. I'm Moda J. I got to get out of here. I got like four days and I'm going to head out. I'll be gone for a week. We're going to try to do some lives out there, maybe on the beach. And I'll probably do one from the room. And maybe, maybe Sunday we'll we'll do a live and you guys tell me what you want to see out there and I'll try to record it. But man, I love y'all, man. I appreciate all y'all. You know, a lot of people don't be joining the Bel Air lives. Power will be back on in two weeks. So we working. We working. We also got fight night next week. We got Bel Air. Then after that, we got power. And then after that, we got the penguin. So we got some shows, man. We got some shows. We got to get to it. But